family-owned shop in Loganville, Sosby's Garage for all your automotive repair needs. We service all makes and models, Ford and domestic. We repair engines, alternators, brakes, alignments, AC systems, and more, using certified technicians with over 90 years of combined experience. We also offer same-day service for some repairs. Sosby's Garage, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Dependable, honest, and fair. Look us up on Google or Facebook. We'll take good care of you. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Hey everybody, welcome to Case in Point again, presented by Paradigm Security Services. I'm your host, Rick Strawn, the president of Paradigm Security Services. We're excited to be with you again today on Business Radio X. We are broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio, located in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. In addition to Paradigm Security Services, this show is also brought to you by Sosby's Garage, which you just heard a little clip on, and the Mana Scholarship Fund. Every show we feature businesses and organizations in the Atlanta area, especially those that serve Gwinnett County. Now, while all businesses have security concerns, not all are about physical security, and we'll touch on that and other related aspects of security through the course of our shows. Our guest today, happy to have back with me, Mr. Raymer Sale. How are you, Raymer? I'm doing fine, Rick. Thanks for having me back. Always, always. Um, you know, most people, I think, that here are going to hear this know who you are, but give me a quick quick bio, if that's possible for you. A uh, quick bio of who's Raymer Sale. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I, I uh, as you said, am Raymer Sale. I own a business uh, called E2E Benefits Services and a second one called E2E Resources located in Duluth. Uh, selling employee benefits insurance. Been doing it for 30 years here in, uh, in Gwinnett County. Uh, we have a staff of eight, serve small, medium, and large employers. And uh, that's uh, married to my wife, Bonnie, coming up on an anniversary uh, next week. Beautiful, wonderful <laughs> lady. <laughs> she's a trip. <laughs> she, she, she's, she's fun. She's a good thing. She'd have to be a trip to be married to some I, people. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you probably drove her crazy. <laughs> now I know why. Absolutely. You know, you have a great business in, in the industry that you're in. You've done extremely well. But what's really not, what's really neat to me is that you reach out and to trying to help others in the service industry. And the first responders are a big thing to you. And every year, uh, you do a little event called Red, Blue, and You. Yes, we do. And I love the name because, you know, I mean, it's all about red and blue, and you know, red, white, and blue to me nowadays especially. But Red, Blue, and You has a special focus. And kind of tell people what is Red, Blue, and You. Sure, sure. I'd be glad to. Uh, red, Blue, and You uh, was formed uh, back in 2016 because there was a – good deal of uh, of uh, animosity toward our first responders uh, and uh, I was sitting with a group of folks basically complaining about what was going on and somebody said well why don't you do something about it well okay there you go put run, your action where your mouth is <laughs> run your mouth you get you yep. get taken down so uh, with the help of just a great bunch of people we formed the organization called Red Blue and You Annie Valenti was uh, one of the catalysts that, uh, behind it because she uh, organized a meeting with uh, Butch uh, Ayers and me. And as I was getting out of the car going to the meeting, I thought, what are we going to call this thing? And it occurred to me, Reds, Fire, Blues, Police, and how about you, the, the citizens? And so it is an organization designed to support our first responders because they're on the front line. They're the ones that run toward the stuff that all the rest of us run away from. And... Uh, and they are uh, brave men and women that uh, keep us safe and allow us to go shopping at night and uh, sleep in safe homes and uh, in areas that are protected well by their services. And last year, uh, due to the pandemic, and by the way, we've not been we've not missed a year. You know, last year, uh, had it out in the football field. We did. We were out in a football field last Chilly. year. Chilly. <laughs> yes, it was. But we added the front line 
uh, to represent the uh, emergency room technicians and, and folks who were working there and the teachers who uh, put their uh, life on the line to get back in school, get our schools up and going, to get our students out of the kitchen where uh, people that uh, were more qualified to uh, help the students learn. So that's kind of the foundation. This is our sixth year. Uh, at, uh, it'll be November the 18th this year. It's always the Thursday in front of Thanksgiving uh, because that's a time just before people start really getting ramped up and we want everybody to participate. Well, you know, we talked a little bit about it last year and, uh, when I had you on on this. One thing I'd like you all to keep in mind that uh, there's another really unmentioned and uh, unrecognized first responder level, and that is private security, uh, which, of course, is what I do. Uh, since and being from law, from law enforcement when the, as a career, I've noticed that since 9-11, a lot of the security officers, and even especially during this pandemic, it's ramped up, but uh, they were basically considered essential. And they have really become, in a lot of ways, a first responder because with all the stuff that our police are going through today, <clears throat> cutting back on personnel and all of that, those 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 uh, private security officers are being forced to step up and we've tried increasing their training a lot to be able to recognize stuff and help to interact and be be basically that first responder to call police and get them there as a as a as the first responder on that type of an end of it you're you're exactly right and uh, uh while uh, we call them first responders uh, in not in order not to uh, to put every anybody in a class because we don't want to say just police and just fire and just sure. this and that. So certainly they, they are important. As a matter of fact, in a, they are extremely important in our CIDs and have made big changes uh, in, in those organizations. So certainly they're included, uh, if not by name, but in general categorization of them. So absolutely. And we welcome you, your team, and anybody else that's in security to be sure and join us. And I know you do because you welcomed us last year, too. Certainly. I just wanted to give a little shout out to that private security industry while we were, while we were talking about it. That's a good idea. But, um, you know, also, <coughs> I, know, I know the focus has changed a lot since the since the inception of it um, and how is uh, basically the focus you talked a little bit about it just now but the fo real focus is put on of course your first responders but how do y'all get your message out uh, to about these first responders and and get them there and all well the uh, uh, this is one of the areas that, uh, that we use to get them out but we have uh, the uh, uh, sheriff's department hosts a chief's meeting every month uh, and we go to that meeting once a year and invite the chiefs of police and that's the cities and the and the county and uh, uh, the uh, fire chief the highway patrol all of them are in the room and so we spread the word that way and then of course we spread the word uh, via word of mouth uh, for all of our friends and as the event gets uh, closer to uh, the uh, uh, presentation day then of course the committee is significant uh, in size so that they're also promoting it and, pu and pushing out the message to the streets uh, the the idea is yes we want the police officers there we want the fire departments there uh, but we also want the citizens because Absolutely. the citizens are important to knowing uh, to uh, uh, say to the, the first responders that you're important uh, and this year by the way uh, we're going to highlight the uh, Gwinnett Fire Services because this is their 50th anniversary. And there are, I think, the number seven of the chiefs uh, and, and original, excuse me, let me restate that. There are seven of the, uh, there were seven original firefighters, seven mm -hmm. or eight, something like that. And uh, all but one have been invited and I understand are going to be attending the event from the wow. original one 50 years ago. That is fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it, you ought to try that with police, see if you can get the original ones there. That'd be <laughs> real interesting. <laughs> would be. <laughs> no. But, um, you know, you mentioned the citizens. Uh, who should actually attend? I know that that interaction between our first responders and our citizens and that familiarity with them and getting to know each other is really, really, really important. So, who would you ask to be out there in that out there in the public? Just you know, suggest that they come in specific. 
anybody that's a, that lives around here that would be interested in Gwinnett County should attend. The event is free of charge. And let me give you a little highlight about what's going to happen and how it works. Event starts at 11 o'clock, and we're done by 1. And we'll have a presentation of the colors, and we'll have um, a brief program to identify, well, in this particular case, the 50th anniversary of our fire services. Mm -hmm. And then we'll identify some uh, first responders that have uh, – have done extraordinary things during the, the course of the past year uh and then we have a choral group from buford middle school there are 100 of them wow. going to sing the national anthem and they're going to perform two other pieces of music one of them i believe is titled thank you that they sang last year uh and if you want to see big guys cry Step up to the po step up to this one and watch it because there were lots of people with tears in their eyes because we'd not heard the song before, and uh, I still hadn't heard it because I was on the wrong side. I was back at the podium and they were facing toward the audience, which is what they should have been doing. So I didn't hear it very well, but I got lots of feedback off of it and it was really great. There's going to be a static display of some fire equipment. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get some of the early on fire uh, equipment. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but we'll have some of the current fire equipment. And it's going to be held at the Buford Arena in Buford on uh, Shawnee Drive. So if you go to uh, toward the uh, high school, I mean, excuse me, the middle schools, be right there on the left. They've got a beautiful arena. It's across the street from the football stadium. Uh, and uh, they uh, we've done it inside there for uh, two of the last three years. Uh, and uh, it's it's a great a great facility. And once you once the presentation's over, we're going to feed everyone. Uh, Jim and Nick's Barbecue. Uh, and again, there's no charge for any of this. Our uh, supporters uh, c uh, make contributions uh, to uh, to make these events, to make this event happen. And uh, uh, we hope everybody enjoys it. So far, they always have. Well, how long does uh, the event usually last? It will, it will, the, the, the uh, event will start at 11 o'clock, but we'll be done by one. So two hours maximum. You know, it's organizations like this of course you're nonprofit, uh and then and all of this costs money sure and i know that they're that you're always looking for sponsors and participants and donation and you know what would be the best way for people to get in touch with uh with you or with somebody and, and to make a donation or to a sponsor well, if they want to just start by calling my cell phone, that would be a good way. And my cell number is 404-580-1103. Tell me what you would like to do, and I'll make the wheels of progress work from there on. So you, we can invoice you. You can do PayPal. Uh, you can go to our website, which is www.redblueu.org, and you can make donations through there. Well, I know it costs a lot to put one of these things on. Uh, what would what does it basic how much does, how much does it cost to put one of these on well we uh, uh, raise about twenty five thousand dollars a year uh, we have each year a startup cost that runs us about five thousand dollars so uh, we have the arena that's a, a, a cost the food of course is a cost and uh, the uh, insurance that goes along with it uh, and so we usually burn through uh, about uh, uh, $15,000, and let me see if I get that right, because we'll have the uh, 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 a reserve included in that fifteen to twenty. let's call it $15,000. And then the surplus monies that we have, uh, we use to support uh, uh, the uh, first responders. Now, last year, we bought 3,000 pizzas and fed 300 pizzas. Excuse me, I got a little carried away there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, man, I'd like to have had that contract. What, what if, I think we spent $3,000 on the pizza, whatever it was. And we uh, took pizzas. Uh, well, uh, we delivered pizzas to fire stations, to police police precincts, to emergency rooms uh, in, in support of our, all of these folks. And this was done off uh, the anniversary. We did that uh, somewhere in the middle of the middle of the summer. Uh, before the event ever occurred because we had surplus funds from the year before that we hadn't designated. Prior to that, we gave, uh, we had uh, during the uh, the Antoine Tony uh, uh, event where that police officer was killed in the line of duty, 
we contributed, uh, I think it was $2,500 to the police foundation for the Antoine Tony uh, 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 Foundation Fund, and then we gave an equivalent amount over to the uh, Fire Benevolence Society Association. So we, we put our money out. We don't sit on any of it. Uh, we try to get the till as near zero as we can from one year to the next, and all, it all goes to we have no paid staff, we have no overhead. Everybody that does everything they do does it for free. We do have some printing costs that we sure. uh, that uh, that come in front of the event, but uh, every penny that we bring in is is supporting this organization and supporting the people that are first responders. We, as I said, we can retain about five to six or seven thousand dollars to start to do startup money because our insurance runs comes due and then we have to reserve our arena and all of that stuff the next year but other than that it goes well i know that of course delivering pizzas and stuff like that that requires people to do it sure i'm sure you could probably use help from people out there to do that kind of stuff too as far as you know getting in touch with you taking a hold of this thing and actually doing things as you go through the year i think the uh Gwinnett Police Foundation Golf Tournament. Don't y'all have something to... I know you play in it. Sure. Well, that's what you call it. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, I wasn't there this last time, so we took first place. I won't mention I, that. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed out of it. But uh, thank God for COVID shots. God. <laughs> but anyway, um, you, do y'all do y'all actually make a donation of that, or do you just play? No, we make a donation to it as well. Red, Blue, and You does support that organization. That's been one of the things we do. Uh, and in turn, they support us. So it's pretty much just a swap of dollars, if you will, hey, to show works. support of the organizations uh, so that uh, uh, they know that we're back there supporting them and we know that they're supporting us. And so it's a... Uh, uh, it it just that's the way it worked out. Well, and by you playing golf, you're actually furnishing some entertainment. <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's right. I am the I'm the comedy routine out there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I didn't play. I wanted to leave you in full stage this year. <laughs> but you know, there's there's so many things. I know there's some other things that you get involved in uh, as you go through the year that you work with. I know you you do a lot with the chamber. Sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we, uh, we've been a member of the Chamber since, I think the year was 1993. Uh, Ooh, and, you old. Yeah, I know that. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, we, we do support the Chamber organization in many areas. Now, this is through my company, not through Red, Blue, and You. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are many programs they have going on, that uh, the, the Chairman's Club and the golf event that's coming up tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. In the rain it's and the wind. It's going to be cold. Yeah, sir. And uh, so, uh, but we've been involved in the community since the, we opened the business in 1993. And uh, we, we've been a large supporter of the organization. Last uh, weekend, we, uh, as an individual, went to support the uh, Home of Hope, uh, which is an uh, uh, organization, children's shelter, that uh, provides shelter for children and, and moms and dads if necessary. But more than that, it gets them on the path to being self-sufficient and independent and so we went to an event with them and and uh, helped sponsor that or help participate we weren't a sponsor at that time but anyway. well a lot of people lose focus and track on the idea they just want to give money they, they want to give people the ability to nurse off of it mm -hmm. and just be there and stay there and wallow there when the idea is really to give them a hand a, a hand up mm -hmm. instead of just a hand out yes sir and I know that those are the type of organizations that both you and I get involved in. It, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to help somebody stay where they are Correct. if they're in poverty. I don't want them just to say, give me more money. I want to give them whatever it takes to get them out of that, make them self-sufficient, sure. which is what you said, and actually be able to have a better life as they move forward and do it on their own, which is the American dream. And I know that's I know that's what you're focused on. Are there any other organizations that you want to throw out there that you basically in, are involved in? Well, you caught me cold on this one because I yeah, didn't I know, even. I you. <laughs> I don't ask many questions, like, and, and that's okay if you don't, because I know that 
I know you are involved in a lot of yep. them, and the fact that you can't think of them off the top of your head, I understand. You are 92 years old. So. At least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right behind you, brother. <laughs> um, I'm feeling like it every day. But, you know, what is there that you would basically advise people uh, moving through there or just suggest to people, I guess, that the best way, that if you really want to help people, and you really want to get out there and, you know, assist those that are a little bit worse off than you are and, and can really use it, what ways would you suggest that they actually try to do that? Well, you know, the, uh, I, th- I think the, the churches say we want your time, your talents, and your money. And your money. And so uh, the uh, uh, supporting organizations with your money is one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really great when you can support them with your time. Uh, and uh, if they have a party at the end, that even makes it better. Yeah. But um, uh, it, it, there are plenty of good organizations out there. This Home of Hope uh, project is is one that has been around for many years and does a great uh, a, a great job. There's a uh, another one whose name is escaping me right now. That's uh, uh, in uh, uh, Duluth, where they have uh, they have the uh, Single parents and their children in and home Rainbow Village. Rainbow that's, Village, yeah. yeah. That's another great organization. That is a great organization uh, because it, it's as you said, it's a hand, it's a hand up, not a hand out. Uh, and and these folks that go through this, these programs, they work hard at it. They they suffer, and it, and when they get to see the light at the end of the tunnel, the ones I've been exposed to have been just happy, happy campers. And so, you know, and you you can even look at the. Uh, uh, habitat for humanity uh i mean they the people that build the house the, the people that's going to live in the house are out there building that house at the same time so there are just lots of good projects that are around there just make sure you know where your money's going and get i think that's it. the biggest part right there is check them out a little bit yep. and make sure that the main monies actually go to the help of the people and the, the focus that they claim to be focused on mm-hmm. and not to a bunch of administrative costs yeah I know that we do uh, work for Warwick Dunn Foundation. Uh, we do the security for them when they do these home for the holidays all mm-hmm. around the nation. Uh, I call up and I get different security companies to to handle them. We handle the ones here in the in Georgia, and that is a great foundation. Uh, Warwick Dunn has been an awesome contributor with uh, what he went through growing up. And uh, it's amazing to watch the looks on these little kids' faces when they're put into a home that they've never been in, a mm, home before. Sure. They have a bedroom of their own. It's got a teddy bear on the bed. I mean, bed spreads, furniture. And they're not used to that. No. And, uh, the gratitude, I think, is probably the most satisfying thing that I've ever seen. It's just the gratitude, not that I have for it, but the gratitude that the people that are on the receiving end, and it's not free home. It's not free homes. Nope. You got to work. You got to work for it. You got to work for it. You got to. You actually pay for the home. It's at uh, reduced in, in, uh, uh, interest and all that kind of stuff. But you know, all of that brings us back around to red, blue, and you. You know, this is one of those things where today uh, our police officers are. Facing so much adversity. Uh, That's true. When I was uh, in police work years ago, uh, one of the things that, you know, we always had to watch out for and we were always told to watch out for is, you know, you got a target on your back from the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Every bad guy out there has got a target on your back. Well, the problem today is most of these officers understand, and I tell them firsthand, you got a target on your back from the good guys the administrations just like you do from the bad guys back in my day so which way do you turn you know you've always got to keep your on your toes you always got to watch and unfortunately a lot of these first responders are being forced to be to step down to stand down a lot where they want to really get out there and do the job and help out which is what you go in there when i first went out there and became a police officer was always the idea i'm going to help all these people i'm going to do this you find out real quick as a police officer when you get on the scene it's after it's already hit the fan sure and what you're doing is you're not helping the people before they get there you're helping them stay alive to deal with it after yep 
And a lot of people don't realize that. It, you know, they think you're there to protect and serve, and you are. But it's generally after it's hit the fan that you get there. And it's not like um, your welfare agencies that are out there to try and deal with it as you're going through it before you ever get there to keep to avoid the situations. And it's the same way with our fire personnel. Uh, they're always under scrutiny. Uh, anything that happens, uh, they're under a lot of pressure today, and they need people to show appreciation. I agree. Which is what Red, Blue, and You does is it tries to bring the community together with the first responders to show the appreciation. And I'll tell y'all right now, for all y'all out there listening that might want to attend or be thinking about it, those officers and those first responders, they appreciate oh, you. They really do. They really, really, really do. Uh, and not just for showing up, not just for being in that, but when you're out there and you're walking around and you see a police officer, don't hesitate to tell them thank you. Uh, I know I pay for, when I see them out there, I pay for their dinner and whatever, mm -hmm. but that's what I choose to do, and I, I don't down anybody for not doing it. Certainly not. But, you know, show some kind of appreciation for these first responders. Just, they appreciate just a thank you. Yeah, there was one other thing that's happening this year that uh, that uh, people would want to meet. We got a new police chief. Yes, we do. Chief J.D. McClure. Uh, and Met him a couple of weeks ago. He is one fine, fine man. And uh, I have seen him uh, uh, in action on a panel, not in police action, but in action on a panel. He handles, handles himself very well. And uh, every and he, he is a very receptive individual he'd be more than happy to meet any of you and i encourage you to go out and shake his hand and say hello to him because he's a he's a great he's a real great asset to our community absolutely um uh, we've had we've been lucky in gwinnett county fortunate in gwinnett county to have had a series of excellent chiefs we have we have been lucky we haven't had a bad chief that i can remember not and since i've, I've been, been here, in town i've been here for 38 years in gwinnett county mm -hmm. And I can't remember a bad chief. They all care. Yes. And it's important to them to instill in our police department, fire department, sheriff's department, it's important that they feel important to instill upon them that idea of caring and of doing everything upfront, totally transparent, and dealing with people on a one on one individual basis and not, you know, picking people out and separating them. But to deal with them just on a legal and a, a very personal basis a lot of times. Sure. And one other thing I need to mention is I'm not to overlook Sheriff Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, new sheriff's in town, as they say. Yep. And you need to meet him. He should be there as well. Uh, nice, fine guy. And uh, would be uh, very receptive to meeting everybody. He's doing some really interesting things at the sheriff's department. You read about him in the newspaper. and. Uh, that he's on Facebook a lot too, and he gets he tells talks about his programs. Yeah, he does, he does. They got some good things going on over there. So, uh, the, the the leaders in our county, community or county will be there, uh, and uh, they're more than happy and would be. Uh, they would love to meet you. Yeah, so well, tell us again when it is, where it is, what time it is, and how much it doesn't cost. And how much it doesn't cost. Well, let's start with when. It's going to be November the eighteenth. That's, That's a Thursday. Thursday in front of Thanksgiving. Uh, it will be at the Buford Arena uh, in Buford uh, on, I believe, the Shawnee Drive. S-A-W-N-E-E. -E. Shawnee Drive is, is the, the street. It's right off of Buford Highway. If you come in from the mall area, when you pass the big high school on the right, the two traffic lights down turn left, and you right go up the hill. It's right across from the football stadium. starts at 11 a.m. It ends at 1, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, it is a uh, tribute, a thank you. That's the main purpose of this, to say thank you to our first responders. Uh, and the uh, uh, event will end promptly at 1 o'clock, and the cost is zero, no charge. And, we'll and feed it you really lunch. is zero. It is. We'll feed, we'll feed you lunch. <laughs> uh, Jim and Nick does a great job for us every year. They put their, uh, put their uh, barbecue and coleslaw and peach cobbler and all of that stuff out there and uh, oh, it's serve it to awesome. you. And... Uh, places to sit down and eat we'll have that uh, table so you can eat with the first responders they'll 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 be i don't know how many round tables we have out there but they'll be, uh, be i think we can set a seat a hundred people at a time in the lobby area of the arena so it's a it's a big area one thing i'd also like to 
to recommend strongly is for all of y'all that come, bring your small children. Oh, yes. Um, the children really get a kick out of seeing the police officers, seeing the firemen, seeing the EMTs. Uh, they really get a kick out of it. And it's really important in today's society that they understand that these are friends, they're not foes. And uh, it, it's, it is so important. And same way with any of your high school kids at the school – the school may or may not be in session at that time, so who knows what it's going to be. But if these kids are out, get them to come down for the meal and to interact with these law enforcement officers and firemen and EMTs because it is an experience that will have a lifetime effect on them. It will. It will. Well, Raymer, I want to thank you so much for coming in here and talking about this again. And, you know, it's hard to believe that it has been a year. Yes. Uh I mean, it's going by fast. It seems like the older I get, the faster the years go by, and that's just not right. I'm going to quit taking the Christmas tree down. I just have to decorate it too often. I know. Every time you turn around, it's Christmas again. That's yeah. True. So, again, I want to thank Raymer Sale with E to E Forces. And you. so you have EDE resources and EDE benefit service. Benefit service. Yeah. I know there's a man of many trades here, and they're all wrapped under one. Here. And they're all together. And yeah. they're all together. And let me yeah. tell you one more time: yes, if, you, if you want to get a hold of us for uh, questions or any kind or anything yeah. to do with the event, uh, give me a call on my cell phone: four zero four five eight zero one one zero three. And my name is Raymer Sale, S A L E, and I'd look forward to talking with you. And he will definitely give you all the information and give you the guidance that you need to get there. Well, thank you again for joining us on Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services and in part by Sosby's Garage and the Manor Scholarship Fund. Be sure to join us for the live broadcast every other Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. here on Business Radio X. If you miss the live broadcast, no worries. You can enjoy the show anytime by visiting businessradiox.com selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on Case in Point. The program is also available on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy your favorite podcast. So be sure, please, to hit that subscribe button to Case in Point so you don't miss any of our future episodes. For my guest, Raymer Sale, and I'm my producer, Mike. And remember, I am Rick Strawn. And remember, at Paradigm Security Services, we cover more than just your assets. Thank you.